Hi everyone, I make Excel and PowerPoint templates to help people get ahead in their career and get the most out of their business or startup. This one in particular is a project in a box. It's a work breakdown structure dictionary, which while you won't hear about it very often, is actually one of the most powerful tools you can use on your project. Many people end up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars as an organization for software that manages their project in this way, but this can actually do it all in the one sheet. And we're going to show you how to create it today. It's also a really useful add-on to our work breakdown structure where if we are taking a basic idea and breaking it down into features and then small ideas, and then breaking that down into tasks that a team can actually create or work on themselves. But now we're adding more information, such as the percentage complete, who's assigned to it at the moment, are there any dependencies, and with our sheet, we've got a few neat little tricks, so it will, show, it will highlight the cards that are dependencies for these particular cards as well, so that we know to work on them more quickly. Uh, it shows the percentage complete. We've got a few little bullet points here as well, and then all the other information you need to see at a glance when you're managing items on your project. Let's get into the sheet. The first thing we're going to do is just create the general framing and colors, and we might speed this up ever so slightly as we do this before we get into the real goods of our work breakdown structure dictionary. Now for all of our heading rows, and for this let's use a nice light blue, a nice turquoise color, and of course we'll make the text white for this as well. And now let's set up the borders around all of this, just so we know what we are working with. We can just use a normal thick border for our initial setup, and even for, our, uh, for the rest of our work breakdown structure dictionary. And then we can select all of our area, and we can just use a little trick by going to more borders, and we can do all of the borders at once. So let's put a, a dashed line as a, hor oh, as a horizontal line, not that one, but a, a normal line as our vertical line. And when we do that, there we go. Now all of our borders and the lines are set up very nicely. Let's put a border around our little boxes here as well, just so that we know what we're working with. And now we've got a great template to get started. First things first, we're going to add our unique ID. Oh. And for all of our items, let's select all of our whole table, go to Format Cells, and we want to wrap the text when appropriate. So if we wrap that, now everything uh, won't spill over when we don't want it to. Our first item will be that unique ID, and this is going to look something like this. We'll have a 1, a 1.1, and then a 1.11, and then we might have a 1.12, then we might have 1.2 as our next setup. So the way this will work, and 1.21, the way this, is, this will work is this will be our feature, and this will be our feature one, for example. The next one, like we'll, next one down will be our task, and then there will be our subtasks. So the more decimal points we have, then we're delving into subtasks. Just for one decimal point will be our task. But of course, you can give these any ID numbers that you prefer or that you prefer to use. When we're using this, let's increase the indent ever so slightly, but put this over to the right-hand side. And the way we're going to show our features, that will be on over to the left. Same with our task, that will be over to our left. But our subtasks, we will increase the indent ever so slightly, just so that does stand out. Now also for our features, we're going to give that an extra color, just a nice hazy blue, and we can make that bold. So now we really know when we've got our big features and where they're going to be in our work breakdown structure. What we're dealing with here is the description. And while we've just used task and subtask, you can actually describe these items in any way you please. A description of the work to be done or the feature to be delivered. Next, we're going to say who is it currently assigned to? So who's currently working on the item? And you can have any of your names of the people in your project. And for these as well, Let's increase the indent ever so slightly oh, over here, and that way it just looks a little bit nicer. If we want to just have a normal dash, we can put an apostrophe up here, and then a dash, and that will show as a normal dash for us, uh, and that's for a blank cell if it's not assigned as yet. And that way that just makes it look really nice. Our next one is our percentage complete, and this is where the fun really begins. First of all, let's make all of these ones a percentage, and there we go, just by clicking that there. 
And if we say this one is 80% and 70% and 30%, we'll put them in the middle as well, just so that it looks a little bit nicer. But now we get to do something really, uh, really fun. And we go to conditional formatting. And if we go to data bars, and if we just select a, a gradient fill here, uh, then as you can see, it gives us a nice bar for these to show the actual percentage complete. We want to manage this rule and just make sure that it is set up in the way that we want. So we'll edit this rule. We'll take this over here. And what we want is it to be a number for the lowest, uh, for the minimum and the maximum. And it's because it's a percentage, it needs to be between zero and one because it's uh, in, decibel, in decimals. So zero point one is 10%, for example. So we're going from the minimum of zero to the maximum of one. And if we click OK and apply, now this will accurately show when we've got different percentages complete for this particular item as well. So this is really, really cool. Another really cool thing is the dependencies. So if we say dependent on, and again, if we want just a blank, we can use an apostrophe and a dash and that way we've got nothing in particular there. Let's put these in the center as well. But let's say we do have a dependency of 1.1 or 2.1, for example. Maybe this one has 1.12 as our dependency. Now we're going to do something really, really cool and highlight those dependencies uh, over on the left-hand side so we know to work on those first. And to do that, we're going to select all of this and we're going to go to conditional formatting. We're going to select a new rule and we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. The formula we're going to use is equals if, uh, is if, count if, uh, any of these items in this row uh, equals the current cell that we're in. And the way we do this is with the B6, that's our first cell, we're just going to get rid of any of the dollar signs so that it will flow when, uh, when, it, when we copy it down. Um, or it will actually, it will go up and down with no worries. If we have the dollar signs, then it will stay within that range and it won't, it won't move. So that's why we have the dollar signs for the F column, because we don't want that to move but we do want our B6 to go down to B7, B8, B9, and so forth. Now, if we format that, and if we select fill, and let's just select a nice light orange. We don't want it to be too outrageous, not a glaring red, but let's have it just as a nice orange. And that way we know that this is something that we have to work on because there is a dependency coming up in the future. Our next one is our resources required. And for our resources required, this could be people, this could be systems, or this could be things, um, or anything that we choose. But another neat little trick that we're going to use is insert symbol up in the top here. And what we're going to do is use Segoe UI symbol. And I hope I've pronounced that correctly. But the subset is miscellaneous symbols and arrows. And if we select just a nice little, uh, little right hand arrow, and if we insert that there, then we can actually use those as bullet points. And if we hold Alt and Enter, then this can be the, the bullet points and we can say maybe we're reliant on James, uh, and maybe we're reliant on Martha, for example. And we'll just look at this a little bit down and we'll change it back to the Calibri or any other thing that you prefer and just decrease the size of that a little bit. And now we can clearly see uh, who is required or the resources that we need for this particular task. Our next one is our cost estimates. And this is also really important on our project. If we select all of this and uh, right click format cells, what we want is our number. We just want that as a currency. And that gives us a nice, uh, a really nice way of looking at the dollar signs. If we put that over to the right and indent it a little bit, then if we put $1,000 in here, it will format that beautifully for us. After that, we want our acceptance criteria. Now you can use this uh, in your project a few different ways. You could have this just as, a, uh, as the test case name that you've got in your project, or you can have this as the actual criteria uh, that must be done. For example, a functioning system. 
or you might have steps, for example, uh, so you must have this, must have that, in order for this to be accepted by the person that you're delivering the value to. And of course, the person that you're delivering to, we're going to need to sign off. So signed off by, and again, we can use those bullet points, uh, but we can have the person that we're signing off on that particular card, and they might need to sign off on the requirements um, or the acceptance criteria, and then they might need to sign off it once it has been completed as well. So that's something that we, that we can use uh, very easily on our project. Now lastly, we're going to have our start date and our estimated finish date. And for these, if we select all of these, and if we right click and go to format cells, then if we actually just go to a custom, maybe we can, or a select a date, uh, then we can actually change this to be just the day, maybe three months and four years. And by doing that, that'll give us a nice way of looking at it. So we might have the 21st of March, 21, for example. Uh, and now that formats it really nicely for us. But of course, you can format this any way you please. And now that we've done this very quickly and very simply, you have a project in a box. There is just so much good stuff and it's all on a single page. I hope you can use this in your career and I hope that it helps you find success in whatever you're doing. I've really enjoyed spending the time with you creating this sheet today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.